Happy holidays guys and welcome back to the channel with another movie reaction. We are going to be watching It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, I don't know too much about the film other than that it's a classic. Uh, I am watching the black and white version. I found out that there was a version that was colorized later, but it feels heretical to watch it that way. Uh, and I don't want to be a heathen this season, this holiday season. So we're watching the black and white version. Uh, I'm excited to check it out, and yeah, if you want to watch the full reaction, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. Otherwise, let's get started. Oh. You sent for me, sir? Yes, Clarence. That was man cute. man down on Earth needs our help. George, help! Help! Oh! George saved his brother's life that day, but he caught a bad cold, which infected his left ear. Cost him his hearing in that ear. Oh, wow. I like him. You like every boy. What's wrong with that? <laughs> Here you are. What's wrong with that? I'll love you till the day I die. I'm going out exploring someday. You watch. Wow. I'm going to have a couple of harems. What kind of tricks you play into it? Ooh. Oh, jeez. So you You put something bad in those capsules. Don't eat my sewer again. Oh, no, Don't no, eat no, my no. sewer again. Oh, George. George. Oh, Mr. Cow, I would never tell anyone. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I wish I had a million dollars. <laughs> Hot dog! Hot dog. <laughs> George! Welcome back! <laughs> That's the reason why I came in for it. If it hadn't have been for that, that race had been a cinch. Do you remember of a George? This is Mary. Oh, she remembers well, George. <laughs> Yeah, get out of there. Oh, well. Mary, I know what I'm going to do tomorrow, and the next day, and next year, and the year after that. I'm shaking the dust of this crummy little town off my feet, and I'm going to see the world. What'd you wish, Mary? Buffalo uh, gals, can't you come out tonight? tonight can't you come out tonight? You want the moon? Just say the word, and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Go ahead. What do you. Oh. This is a very interesting situation. Please give me my rope. Uh, I'll call the police. On their way downtown. They'd be on my side, too. Oh, then oh, I'm going to scream. Damn. Your father's had a stroke. Well, in my book, he died a much richer man than you'll ever be. Well, this town needs this measly one-horse institution, if only to have some place where people can come without crawling to Potter. They voted Potter down. What? They want to keep it going. How many? How many? They only one condition. What's that? Uh, and that's the best part of it. They've appointed George here as executive secretary to take his father's place. I'm going to school. This is my last chance. Uncle Billy here. He's your man. But George, they'll vote with Potter otherwise. And... I know, I know. He didn't go. That's right. He you know what the three left. most exciting sounds in the world are? Uh huh. Breakfast is served, lunch is served, no, dinner. No, no, no. <laughs> Anchor chains, plank. Where's my hat? Where's my hat? Oh. oh, thank you, George. He took it right off his head. Here you go. This is mine. The metal one. Ooh. Some joke, huh? <sighs> What's he want? I don't know. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> Me? Huh? Not a thing. I, I just came in to get war. Why don't you go home? That's where I'm going. I don't know why I came here in the first place. Good night. Good night. Uh. Hee haw. Hello, Sam. How are you? Oh, well, that's awfully sweet of you, Sam. <laughs> oh, There's my God. There's an old friend of yours here, George Bailey. Is it the oh, biggest thing since Mary. radio? And I don't want to get married ever to anyone. You understand that? I want to do what I want to do. And you're... And you're... Oh, Mary. George, George, George. That was extremely uncomfortable to watch. For the highest hotels, the oldest champagne, the richest caviar, the hottest music, and the prettiest wife. Uh -oh. After that, who cares? Oh, no, that doesn't come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> Did they not go? You got any money in the bank? You better hurry. 
George, let's not stop. Let's go. Come on up there. All you can take with you is that which you've given away. George, Ooh. was it a nice wedding? Gosh, I wanted to be there. I need money. How am I going to live until the bank opens? I got doctor bills to pay. I need cash. I can't keep my kids on faith. I'm gonna have. How much do you need? Hey! Oh. I got two thousand dollars. But it's your own money, George. Now, don't mind about that. How much do you want? Well, I can get along with twenty, all right. Twenty dollars. Two. One bingo! <laughs> we made it, close the door, you sit. We made it. Look, look, we're still in business. We still got two bucks left. Well, look, let's have some of that. Let's celebrate. Do <laughs> we? This is what I wished for. <laughs> He purposely has these this chair like super low so that he'll be taller. I'll start you out at twenty thousand dollars a year. <laughs> a couple of business trips to New York a year, maybe once in a while Europe. You wouldn't mind that, would you, Jones? Would I? He would own you. Okay, Mr. Potter. You're shaking hands with the devil. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, ooh. <laughs> I want my baby to look like you. I didn't even have a honeymoon. Your what? My baby. You're, 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 you you just gave him the eight thousand dollars. Uh... It means bankruptcy and scandal and prison. One of us is going to jail. Well, it's not going to be me. Isn't it wonderful about Harry? Uh... His name is George. I, I don't know why we don't all have pneumonia. Drafty old barn of a place. Dude. I will be living in a refrigerator. <sighs> Dude, 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 dude. You're the only one in town that can help me? <laughs> I've suddenly become quite important. Uh, what, what kind slimy. of security would I have, George? <laughs> You're worth more dead than alive. Life insurance. That's why he's taking his own life. They don't pay out life insurance policy if you commit suicide. But I suppose they have no way of knowing. I guess, I mean... Is this the guy who hasn't gotten his wings yet? What? Help! Help! I jumped in to save George. What? Ooh. Save me. I suppose it'd been better if I'd never been born at all. Wait a minute, that's an idea. What? One of the oldest trees in Pottersville. 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 For twelve. Well, come on, Gabriel. Clarence. Clarence. <laughs> Clarence. Don't you know me? Oh. Well, that rumhead spent twenty years in jail for poisoning a kid. If you know him, you must be a jailbird yourself. <laughs> They're not there either. What? Zuzu's petals. Oh. Just get me home. <laughs> he is freaked out. Jeez. Tommy! P. J. Zuzu, where are you? They're not here, George. You have no children. He says he's an angel. He's trying to hypnotize I hate me. to do this Mark, to you, bud, but... Mark. Ow! Oh, oh, oh. Run, George! Run, George! Oh. He bit the ah. cop. Joseph! <laughs> he just disappeared. Mother. Mother. <sighs> oh, this close-up shot of his face. Your brother, Harry Bailey, 
died. Through the ice and was drowned and, oh. at the age of nine. That's a lie. Harry Bailey went to war. Because you weren't there to save Harry. <sighs> It's George. Don't you know me? What's happened to us? I don't know. You let me go. Mary, please. Oh, don't do this to me. Please, Mary. Help me. Where's our kids? I need you, Mary. Eee, yikes. Help. Get me back. I don't care what happens to me. Get me back to my wife and kids. Help me, Clarence, please. Please, God. Let me live again. And hey, George. There we go. Get out of here. What the Sam Hill are you yelling for, George? You... <laughs> George. George. <laughs> Bert, do you know me? <laughs> you know you? <laughs> you kidding? Hey, your mouth's bleeding. Are you sure you're all right? What you? <laughs> <laughs> My mouth's bleeding, Bert. My mouth's bleeding. Zuzu's pedals. Zuzu. There they are. <laughs> what do you know about that? He seems just as crazy. <laughs> In jail. George, I've got a little paper. I'll bet it's a warrant for my arrest. Isn't it wonderful? I'm going to jail. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Where's Mary? Kids. Pete. Oh, oh. oh. Kids, Janie. Janie, Tommy. George, Tommy. Where are you? Oh, oh George. 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 Come on downstairs. Quick, they're on their way. Come on. They're on their way. <laughs> Family, the everybody. Come in, Uncle Billy. Everybody in here. George, you better come. I'm busted in Jukebox, box too. My office instructed to advance you up to twenty-five thousand dollars. Stop. Hee haw and Merry Christmas, Sam Wainwright. To my big brother George, the richest man in town. <laughs> No man is a failure who has friends. Thank you for the wings. Every time a bell rings, uh, an angel gets his wings. And a boy clad. Mr. Mr. Potter didn't get his though. It's really interesting looking back at movies from decades and decades ago. Uh, Mr. Gower smacking George when he was a kid over and over again. I mean, nowadays an employer hits you like that. Well, first of all, George wouldn't be able to work that young, I guess. Um, I, I guess there are still people who are young who are working, but um, you see less of that nowadays. But you get a pretty hefty lawsuit on your hands if you if your boss hit you like that. Uh, so I always find it interesting to see how different films were back then. And I mean, there's a lot of stuff that George Bailey did that is uncomfortable to watch. Uh, and I'm not entirely sure why Mary is so into George early on. Like we see what kind of man he is later when he puts aside his dreams over and over for the people around him. But um, I mean, we also see when he stands up to men like Potter. But Mary as a kid is like, I'm going to love you till the day I die. And then is like always super into him despite him being, I don't know, just mean. You don't like coconuts? What in the world is wrong with you? Um, <laughs> and then there's the way he's like toying with her when she's naked in a bush. Uh, super sleazy. And uh, later when she comes back to Bedford Falls after school um, because she was homesick. He's like really rude about it. Like you, you, you are homesick for here. Like really. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's oh, oh, the the biggest thing was um, early on was um, the way he and Mary got first got together with him like violently shaking her. That was really difficult. A really difficult scene to watch. Um, but yeah, like nowadays, if my friends told me something like that happened with someone they were into, I'd be like, no, turn away, turn turn around, run away. Um, like, it doesn't seem like that big of a deal here, um, and, 
the way he treats his family when he comes home after his uncle loses the eight thousand dollars. I guess he was. I get figures he was very very upset, but none of that was okay. Um, but like for the sake of the story, um, and where the story is going, he needs to have a very he needs to have very real flaws. Uh, so it makes sense within the context of the story, and there's definitely, definitely enough good in him that you feel for him, and his struggles, and the way the world beats down on him. Like it's so sad, and you can't help but empathize. Um, just the fact that he always wanted to leave Bedford Falls, he was never satisfied with this place, and he never got to leave. And it's it's honestly incredibly tragic. Uh, that got me really hard. Like I was cr- almost crying, like in the first half of the film already. And he always winds up staying for other people. Uh, he does it so that Mr. Potter doesn't have a mon- monopoly on everything in the town. Um, and then early on in the film, he throws that rock at the glass with the house. Um, th- like that early on, his and Mary's wishes were so like super opposed. And she got her wish, but he didn't. Um, like I was... <sighs> As early as him missing out on that first train, I was just like, oh, oh, that, that hurt a lot. Um, that was when his father died. And um, yeah, I, even earlier in the film, he's like, I couldn't face being cooped up in a tiny office for the rest of my life. I feel that big time. I get that big time. Um, I knew from an early age I didn't want to work in an office and stuff like that. And so thank God for the internet so I can chase this little dream of, of mine of uh, doing YouTube. But yeah, uh, that scene with George uh, when he goes over to Mary's house, um, he didn't want to go in the first place. Like he knew her dreams and her, his were incompatible and she wanted to come back home and one day live in the destroyed old building. He wanted to travel the world. So even though they had chemistry that time at the dance, he tried to keep her away, doesn't want to visit her. The, the constant grunting when his mom's like, you should go see her. She's a nice girl. It's like, hmm, uh, hmm. <laughs> Um, but then, yeah, he winds up just wandering around, couldn't, couldn't get a date with Violet, mostly because he and her were just too, too different as people. I keep doing this, this episode, this, uh, video for some reason, but yeah, um, he winds up wandering to Mary's house and Sam calls just as he's exiting, um, after they get into a fight because she clearly wants this to happen and he... He wants it to happen, but he won't let himself want it. Um, But yeah, Sam calls, and she and George share the phone, and there's that palpable romantic tension. Um, They're so caught up in each other that they miss out on investing this new in this new thing that's the biggest thing since radio, and it's apparently like some sort of plastics uh, got used in the war, which must have blew up his bank account, Sam's bank account. (laughs) Yeah, he's real. He's a funny character. but then, yeah, that was followed by the violent proclamation of, you're not going to tie me down. I'm leaving this place in the dust. Uh, Mary just crying, and then both of them giving in to their feelings. And it cuts to them getting married. And I guess if you didn't already know up to this point, he was never going to leave. But, uh, yeah, speaking, we knew very early on that he was like, about to commit suicide. And that was very cute, the way Clarence came in as like a little star, um, as an angel. But yeah, you knew this. This was not going to be a happy movie, uh, at, at least at the beginning. Um, at least f- through most of it. Um, but yeah, it cuts straight to them getting married, and I was like, "No, I, I assume they had a good relationship after that phone call." Um, I guess, but I wasn't like over the moon that they're married now. I didn't feel the romantic connection between the two because we just hadn't seen anything that showed that George would be a good partner. Um, I mean, there are signs of him being a good person for sure. But being a good person and being a good partner aren't necessarily the same thing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I was... And then we also knew, like, he was talking about going to Bermuda, New York, the highest size skyscrapers, the richest, uh, most expensive caviar, the prettiest wife. And, yeah, it makes it so much more tragic that we knew from the beginning that he was never going to leave. So that those moments when he's, like, excited to finally go... You feel so bad for him, and then that bank run happened, and they had to stay. That was George's last chance to get away, uh, I think, in the whole entire film. So, 
yeah, he stayed and Mary offers their $2,000, which I looked up is about $40,000 today in 2019. So uh, all to save the business to have somewhere where Potter doesn't control everything. Yeah, and after all that, she's like waiting in the rickety old house that she loved all along. Um, that was really romantic. And yeah, it was her dream all along, her wish all along from that rock through the glass. And yeah, she, over the years, she fixed it up. I can't ima imagine the amount of work that took. Um, yeah, just ridiculous. And uh, that meeting with Potter, where Potter has like a very good read on George, because like he wants to manipulate him. He just wants to buy George out, and George actually like falls for it a little bit. He's just like shaking his hand and like, oh yeah, Mr. Potter, like I'll think about it, definitely. And then he's just like starts like, oh my hand. <laughs> um, but yeah, he turns him down based off principle, despite being offered everything he could ever want, um, or everything that he want, would ever want for himself traveling a good job to support the kids he'll have in the future it's life-changing money like twenty thousand a year like i said before two thousand would be forty thousand today so twenty thousand a year would be around four hundred thousand dollars in today's time so definitely life-changing money but he chose principles over his dreams ah <sighs> And yeah, the building and loan just stays afloat for a couple more years until George's uncle accidentally hands over the $8,000 to Potter. And Potter just keeps it, man. Oh. Again, $8,000 would be around six. Wait. $8,000 would be around $160,000, um, I think. Based on the previous calculation, four times 2000 which was $40,000. Um, but yeah, it sends George into a spiral because it seems like this whole world is just crashing down around him. He might go to jail for a litany of crimes. And um, yeah, George is so angry with his uncle and tells him he's not going to go down for this. But what's we see him again doing not even necessarily what's right, but what's kind. Like he doesn't want his uncle who isn't quite all there to have to suffer in jail. And... He tells his uncle he isn't going down for this, but when Mr. Potter asks him, George says he himself lost the money. <sighs> Man. I mean, even his uncle wouldn't want that. His uncle would want the him to go free because it's his mistake, first of all, and it's also because when you're older, when you're at an age of like 60, 70, you just want the... Like, you've lived a lot of your life and you don't want um, your nephew or your son or just any younger significantly younger relative to be locked spend most of their life locked up um and i think that whole it was like just tragedy just building and building and building but then the last quarter of this film makes it really special like clarence comes down and saves george from killing himself by making george save him instead uh just appealing manipulating him a little bit but appealing to the compassion in him um his need to help other people and the whole sequence of uh george seeing what things are like without him is great um i actually laughed in the moment when he runs away from his mother's house because there's this like super close-up of his face and it's just so incredulous and the situation is so wild and incredible but honestly like his that was some really solid acting like just right you you see because he's so close to the the face the camera so close to the face like every micro expression just rang so true um so yeah great job by james stewart playing george bailey uh and not just in that moment just throughout the entire film and um the acting for all the other characters were great as well donna reed as his wife was great lionel 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 i guess that's how you pronounce it uh lionel barrymore as mr potter you had to hate him which is well done um uncle billy clarence they were both great um, yeah, uh, a lot of side characters as well that I really enjoyed, but yeah, uh, that was really tragic. Um, you see George at the cemetery where Bailey Park is supposed to be and Harry Bailey died when he was eight because George was never there to save him. And because George was never there to save him, Harry couldn't save all those people in the Navy. Um, so yeah, just... It's incredible to see how many things have changed because of him. 
and yeah, it makes me really wonder. I, I really kind of want to see what would life would be like, um, what the world would be like, or what my friends would be like without me in their lives. I don't know that I've made as big of a contribution as uh, George Bailey has, but because, um, yeah, the economy isn't great enough for me to actually have the money to do that. But yeah, um, just very, very enjoyable film. Now, the ending of the film, I'll actually start off this section with uh, how I first heard about this movie. So it was on an episode of Friends. It's the one where Phoebe learns that her mother always like stopped the movies and said the end before the sad parts happen in movies to shield her and her sister from like horrible endings. Um, and so Monica is just like, yeah, watch It's a Wonderful Life. It's baked right into the title. And Phoebe watches it and says, I didn't watch the ending. It was I was just too depressed. Like it kept getting worse and worse and worse. It should have been called It's a Sucky Life, and just when you think it can't suck anymore, it does. Um, so that's my first exposure to this film. <laughs> so I, I kind of knew, I guess I kind of knew the general trajectory this film was going. Not that the movie makes any, um, like, like the movie doesn't try to hide where the, the film is going at all, but um, now that I know exactly what she's talking about by through watching the film, and through experiencing the ending, I'm just like, no, Phoebe, you should have stuck it out till the end because it's so good. Oh man, I was so emotional through the last part of it. I'm actually a little, I was normal. I'm a little bit sad because like my emotions didn't fully come through in my reaction, I think. Um, I didn't full on ball or anything. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it was really, really powerful. My only complaint about the ending is that Mr. Potter gets away with keeping the $8,000, which isn't anything to him, but I mean, there are several messages you can take away from that, I think. Um, the story is about the fact that it isn't about the money. Like George Bailey, who has never had much money, finds himself, finds himself sur surrounded by friends and family who care deeply about him, whereas Mr. Potter will be alone till the, the day he dies. Um, and yeah, it's just, I don't know. And I feel like, I mean, the movie was pretty long already. It's like already two hours and something minutes. So uh, I don't know how they could have gotten him into cuffs or whatever um, to wrap that all around. But I guess since it's a holiday movie, you didn't want anybody to suffer that much. <laughs> um, speaking of, it is the holidays. I'm going to try to not dwell on a doom and gloom picture. But yeah, like... It's interesting that there are so many uh, similar themes, um, similar situations back then to now, like with income inequality the way it is now, like 63% of Americans can't afford an unexpected $500 bill, which means, yeah, like 63% of people, if they get a $500 bill, um, they, they will go into debt. And yeah, most people can't afford to do what George Bailey did for the people of his town, but... Um, yeah, even now I see hope. I've been into politics since I was young, but I hated politicians. So I think for the longest time I wanted to get in to change it from the inside. And yeah, like 99% of politicians in Washington are exactly like Mr. Potter. They look out for their donors or for their own political careers, but not for the people they are elected to represent. Um, but yeah, we're starting to see a significant change in that the last few years. Uh, we have some working class politicians making real change and yeah i've never been more inspired and hopeful for the future of our country and the world but in order for them to get things done we need the population as a whole to be well educated on the issues we need young people to get involved and go out and vote in record numbers and yeah i'm not going to tell you who i'm voting for not in this video um though if you know my politics from other videos you know who i'm voting for um I'll make another video at some point about that, but all I want to say here is do your research. Uh, don't trust the bias in news organizations. Fox is the worst, but MSNBC and CNN aren't much better. Um, but tying it back to this movie, sh sure, it's very touching to see what happened with George Bailey. Like He changed the world for the better. In the world without him, people were crueler, meaner, less sympathetic, and I mean, I personally have a friend who has been poor all her life and has had to live like paycheck to paycheck. Uh, I've been helping out with rent since she was out of high school, but like she's finally making enough money so that she can save a little bit. And she's got still got student loans to pay off, but she also lets all her friends know that if they ever need it, like she will give them money to make things easier for them. 
um, not like as a loan, just like give them money. And um, it means a lot to the people around her. Uh, I've done things, similar things too, but I was much luckier than her because uh, with college, I got to go like full scholarship. Um, but yeah, like it's just everything. So nobody is, nobody my age can afford to do the things that George Bailey did. And like, I've never been able to move out and live on my own despite desperately wanting to because of like just a very toxic and abusive household. Um, I would be able to afford splitting rent with one person, but I would have zero savings and just go into debt with a single medical bill essentially. And like, it's heartwarming that George Bailey and my friend would do these kind of things. But like when people are relying on acts of kindness from people who can barely afford it in the first place, there's something wrong with our society, right? Like we're the richest country in the history of the world. And meanwhile, the, these multi-billion dollar companies exploit their workers, pay them nothing, and then get away with paying zero in income taxes because politicians, once again, serve themselves and their donors and not the people. So yeah, it's, it's interesting to see all this play out. Like we would all want to be the way George Bailey is and be ex as generous as we possibly can, but people can barely survive at this point. Um, and this election cycle, there's actually one candidate, and you could actually argue there are up to four candidates who will actually look out for the people. So my message is just research and vote. Uh, I'm holding out hope that we make the right choice. Anyway, last uh, back to the last tidbits of this movie. I looked it up and this movie came out in 1947, so it's been, what, 70, uh, let me see, 72 years. And that's really interesting when you consider the themes of this movie, um, because like income, like I was talking about with income inequality, uh, obviously that was a big issue with the Great Depression. Uh, I know that reversed in the 30s and 40s um, due to Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal, uh, due to higher taxes on the rich, the post-war economic boom, and the presence of more unions, uh, people's wages went up and the like. So yeah, it was a time of prosperity. People went to college by working part-time jobs in the summer. Whereas now people are paying off their student loans sometimes for decades. Uh, people bought houses. It's nice to see George Bailey be able to help people buy houses. And yeah, the only people I know of my age who own property either went in on it with like a bunch of their parent, uh, a bunch of friends, or with their parents, or they have rich parents who bought it for them in the first place. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting, and also I'm a little envious of how life was back then um it was a little it was significantly easier um but yeah um yeah overall i really did enjoy this film this is a very been a very long discussion it's been 20 minutes already um but yeah uh, i can totally see why it's a classic and why so many people enjoy it so much i also checked the box office it only made three million dollars after a budget of three million dollars uh, i don't know what happened there i guess i could I should have looked it up before making this video, but um, I will afterwards. It's interesting that it didn't make more money, but it's apparently been playing on like radio, I mean, on TV, like over and over again for the last so many decades, seven decades. <laughs> so um, it's become a classic. And yeah, I can see why. I can see how great the actors and actresses were in this film. And yeah, I uh, really enjoy this. Uh, unfortunately, had to cut it down to 10 minutes of footage for YouTube, but if you guys want to watch the full reaction, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. Leave a like, uh, subscribe, comment what you thought about the movie as well. And yeah, um, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, uh, hope you have a good one with your family, and thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye, friends.